Welcome back to the vlog and welcome here to Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan. We're heading out to Andacombe. It's a 506 meter strip, I believe, with a 9% slope. It usually has tailwinds on landing. But let's go ahead and get started. I've got a bunch of stuff for the primary school out there, as well as a drama fuel, I believe, probably for mowing the lawn or for the airstrip. So, there's on, fuel pump on, and low start. For 14%, introduce my low idle. G's coming up at a nice rate, ITT's coming up slowly, oil pressure's already in the green. And it peaks out on the first start at just 563, so nice and cool. Alright, so like I said, we're heading out to a primary school to drop off a bunch of materials for their uh, school, as well as a drum of fuel um, for cutting the airstrip. 20 degrees of flaps, get this thing going, and get a prop forward. Generator on, let the amp spike up, come back down, then we'll throw a generator or a correction. Generator on, then alternator, and then our auxiliary bus. Right, we've got 680 pounds of fuel on board. And let me bring this up. We've got 756 kgs of cargo. So that puts our bottom number at 16, uh, 1670. Crook Tower, good morning, November Tango Echo. Request taxi and a combe, one POV. So, Matingo Echo, Grutel, Morning to Ryan. And taxi to Ronig, one to Lost Pint in Backtrack in Lana. Wind light in favor, can H1 to 1 Lana. Temperature 2 below. Time 0 3. Morning, Rowan, 1 0 1 9 er. Click backtrack line 1 7 left, November Tango Echo. All right, as we get on the runway, strobe on, landing light, and taxi light on pulse. All right, we'll clear left and right. Do our over speed governor check as we roll onto the runway as always. We only do this the first time, for one time during the day, and then all the other flights we don't do it, so. All right, that checked out good. I just wanted to say a huge, huge thank you for everybody that was part of the solar panel project for Yambai Talk. All the stuff has been ordered for the solar panel project, and I've got another couple in mind right now and some other places that I fly for, some needs that they need for their primary school and stuff. So, um, rather than promoting those, because I've already got all the money to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the project and then do a video on what we did with the money so you guys can see where your money is being used here in the communities of Papua New Guinea. Fuel caps and selectors, our controls are all good. Our TAWs will just leave enabled for now. The flaps are already set at 20 degrees. Our weight right now is 7,000 pounds, so we'll rotate at uh, 62 and 73 if we had to come back in. If we're not 50 knots by our taxiway, we'll go ahead and board on the same runway. Just continue straight ahead, full reverse, heavy brake, keep going off, cut off, pull off, and shut off after takeoff. Pitch for 85 knots, consider EPL, emergency power lever. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and feather it. If that doesn't work, we'll go straight ahead, try to find either the road or a field to land in. 80 full flaps, make my emergencies on tower. I'll crack my door close to the ground in case the fuselage bends when I hit the ground. Uh, trim and abort is done. Igniters on, engine and lights are all good. November Tango Echo ready for departure. Ignition condition flash. Trim and Echo running one seven left, flank left turn. Check for takeoff. One seven left, left turn clear for takeoff. November Tango Echo. All right, harness is idle and gov. Checklist is complete. Twenty four degrees out. 1380, so 1330 for 1380. Ignition condition flaps 20, fuel and harnesses. Torque is set. Air speed's alive. There's 50 continuing. There's 62 and rotate. This 
some of you guys have wondered why I do like 1330 for 1380 on the takeoff. It's because I'm in bypass right now. So I do it 50 pounds or 50 um, foot pound of torque below what the chart actually says. Because as you start increasing, it's just ram air then, and then it just brings it right up where you want it to be. All right, so I've got 740 on the ITT. We're over 85 knots, 10 degrees of One, two, zero, one. Over 90 and climbing, zero degrees. Trimming up, bring our prop back to 2,000 RPM. Our ITT will just settle on down into 720, so I'm not going to adjust anything on my power yet. I'm just going to let it slowly settle down to 720, and then in about 30 seconds, if it's not there, then I'll adjust it. Brook Tower, November Tango Echo. Departed time 08, tracking 156. Unclimbed 9000. Estimating end to Combe 36. Combe 9000. And contact Mosby, primary VHF 120, this more 7 signal HF 6622 at 15 miles. 1207 or 6622, 15 miles, no, I'm just throw our autopilot on now for just heading mode, and I'll trim it out to probably like 100 to 105 knots. We're not in really any hurry today, but get up to 900,000. We're ordering us 7,000 right now. Morsi, Morsi, Sierra Sierra Lima, 120, Decimal 1. Flip our landing light off, engine went back to normal, and our igniters are turned off. You can see my Q&H here, my altimeter setting is flashing. We have it set up to, as we go through 7,000 feet. It reminds us to switch from our local Q&H to the area Q&H. So usually it's 10 below, so I'll just put it to 1009er. Wait for Moresby to give me what that's gonna be, and then I'll make adjustments from there. But that way I don't basically level off 300 feet below my desired altitude, thinking that I'm on my altitude. So we are here in Papua New Guinea right now. It's just above Australia, and obviously we're the little blue airplane. And we are just heading down on a 28-minute flight. Let me find out where I actually am. Okay, we're going into that area right here, so straight in like that. Obviously, it's beautiful weather out. This is not normal. Like This is our rainy season, and it's just absolutely gorgeous out, it seems like, every day, which is not typical of this time of year. Typically, it has... Well, usually nice mornings, but then it usually gets really rainy, and it's just rainy every single day. But yesterday, I had flights all the way up till, I don't know, like 4.30, and it was just like this. It was perfect. Once our speed is up to 130 knots indicated, basically I'll level off at my desired altitude, 900,000, get my speed up to my indicated at 130, and then I'm gonna bring my power lever right here back ever, ever so slightly, and it's gonna drop that top number, my torque, right on down to 1250. And also, as I bring that torque out, I'm gonna be basically now pushing a little bit on my left rudder and then getting a little bit of that right rudder trim out because I had a lot of right rudder trim in my climb. A lot of P-factors pulling the plane to the left. So now I'm taking some of those back out now that we're level off, our speed's increased, so we don't need as much right rudder. Morris B1207, November Tango Echo. Morris B6622, November Tango Echo. I'm having a hard time getting up today. Tango Echo Mosby. Hey, morning, November Tango Echo, two, two miles to the South Garoka, maintaining 9,000. Estimating end to Kombe time, three, two. Tango Echo, copy the 9,000, the traffic uh, of November, zero, four, four, seven, eight, five, four, four, seven, eight, four, four, seven, eight, four, four, seven, eight, four, four, Estimating a beam of 2325, will be a descent from flight level 280, estimating Goroka 2338. Copy Alpha November Sierra, November Tango Echo. November Tango Echo, area QNH 1007. 1007, November Tango Echo. 
set up my regular Q&H 107 as well as my secondary over here. Let's turn that down a lot. You can see now I'm 60 feet low, so that's why I preset it as I'm doing my climb through 7,000. So Alpha November Sierra, um, they're coming up from Moresby up into Garoka. So they're starting down here and then heading up here where the little green dot is. And they said that they're going to be in this little area, right in this area. So yeah, he's going to be coming in there. He's 28,000 already, so he's it's going to not really be an issue, an issue whatsoever. We've got a, um, because we have a second to talk about this, let's go ahead and talk about my uh, strip chart. So Andacombe, the elevation is 3,500 feet. It's a one-way airstrip onto a hill. 508 meters, 9% slope, and it usually has tailwinds. So one of the things that I'm really going to be critical of myself is not to turn until I get to the river. So this one, it is notorious for wanting to turn early. I don't know what about it is. The, the sight picture, you always want to turn early. So I'm going to force myself to go all the way to the river before I make my final. Even though it's not going to look right, it will be right once I turn final. So typically we have tailwinds coming into here. You can land with a four knot tailwind, full up on weight, basically 200 pounds under, so I could add one more knot for that. So five knots of tailwind for landing. If you're wondering why uh, you can only land with so much tailwind, I mean, you're like, oh, well, you're landing on a hill and you should be able to stop. Here's, here's the reason why we don't want to land with too much tailwind on, on basically on the side of a hill. is because as it's pushing you in, now your time from basically matching the slope, because you don't just land like normal, you have to match the slope, then reduce power, and then flare so that you're kind of flying up the hill before you actually do your landing. The time it takes as you're leveling off to flare, reduce power, if you have a tailwind, that is so much, so much faster. So if you have five knots, six knots, seven knots, or whatever, um, that that section right there is going to be a lot faster. So what I found is like through trial and error, I would say about usually eight knots is about where my comfort level is on tailwind landings yes, we are into the pump as able mountain now. airstrips. You're uh, checking by the you're a south gap, not above eight thousand. All right, so that's Brad with MAF. He's actually the guy who actually did my initial training here in Papua New Guinea with MAF. Uh, 2015, I flew the J-8 in WeWAC. Flew with him for about 75 hours, and he did a great job. So thank you, Brad. I don't think you're watching this video. In fact, I know you're not. But anyways, thank you. You can see the mountain right ahead of me. That's like 11,000 feet. I'm going to just joggle over to the right just a tiny bit where the mountain's a little bit lower. And I'll just crest over that down into the valley for Andacombe. I'll go ahead and put in my desired pattern altitude at 4,500 feet. Just have an idea where my descent's going to be. So I usually go down around 800 feet per minute typically. So it's just coming up there. So that still works out well. So to head on down, I'll hit my vertical speed button, flip it on down to 800 feet. Also turn my altitude select down to 4,500. My pattern altitude. Quickly look at my runway heading. 07. So I can have my OBS here. Turn to runway 07. And now put a nice line on my screen so I know the orientation of the runway at all times, no matter where I am, if I can see it or not. We'll do our checklist, our selectors. I'm going to leave my right one off for just a few more minutes just to even the fuel out a bit. Our TAWS. We'll do autopilot off. Turn TAWS off. We're 6,900 pounds, so 73 knots on our final, which is already set up. We'll do our landing light. We'll do engine inlet here when we go below 140 knots. On this one, if we do have to go around, it's going to be... Let me just quickly look. Wind after 10 a.m. sinkers on short final. That's good to know. 
and my committal is basically just short final. I'll do a right hand turn out, power up. 20 degrees of flaps, pitch for 73 knots in my right hand turn, reset my ITT to 740. All stations and Tacoma, one to zero, dust fall seven. Kodiak, November, Tango, Echo, one zero miles to the north, passing 7,600 on descent. Circuit time and Tacoma, time three two. In November, Tango, also November, Sierra, four zero miles uh, to the south. We understand passing to zero thousand. And we are for Gruta, remaining Gruta, three six. November Tango Echo copies and no conflict. Alright, we'll start bringing our power back because we're almost into the circuit. Just another seven miles. If you followed any other videos, I'll follow to this. Just to give you guys, if you guys have followed any other videos, just to give you a reference of where we are. Tim Denny is just right down over here, over this top of this mountain, and then further on over there is Marawaka. Just did some videos there just really recently. We'll push our prop forward. If you guys want to fly this exact same flight from Garoka out to Anticompe, I believe it's on my Patreon page. If it's not, then I'll go ahead and put it on it. I'll probably actually put it on there anyways and just delete the other one off. Just to update it with some pictures, I'm going to shoot some drone footage out here. Last time I didn't have my drone with me. But if you guys want to see on the ground content, um, Check out my Patreon page. I try to keep it updated a couple times a week with new content for you guys as much as I can. Um, I'm pretty busy doing this full time and that's kind of almost a full time job. So, uh, but yeah, I do try to get a couple posts out a week for you guys, whether it be pictures or videos or whatever else I can give you guys. So if you are a flight sim and you want to try flying a PNG for yourself, I believe this is on X-Plane. It's not quite accurate, I don't believe. And I believe it's also on Microsoft Flight Sim as well. All stations, Anacombe, November Tango Echoes, and the circuit, Anacombe. Orders B6622, November Tango Echo, in the circuit, Anacombe, report after landing. Morsby 6622, November, Tango, Echo, in the circuit, and a compé. Report after landing. November, Tango, Echo. So, here's how I'm going to determine what the wind actually is. Because the wind socks here in Papua New Guinea are next to worthless. So, there's a bunch of little fires down there with some smoke and stuff. You can see that the wind is ever so slightly pushing this way. Not a lot, but it is a little bit. I'm guessing a few knots, maybe three or four knots. So I'm expecting to have a tailwind on landing and potentially some slight um, downdrafts on short. Up to 4,600, we'll do an engine inlet to bypass, prop and harness done. We'll do SAR on the ground, just in case for some reason I can't land fly overhead so they know we're here. Also check the condition of the airstrip as much as I can from a thousand feet. Looks like it's in good condition. We've got three knots with the tailwind up here. Looks like I'm actually indicating about the same on the windsock. Maybe four knots it looks like. So expecting to have a little bit of a tailwind for sure. I don't see anybody on the airstrip, so that's good. It looks like grass is all nice and good, so plan to land probably about 60 meters in, right around there, maybe a little bit further, just because we do have a tailwind, there's a good chance that we'll get pushed down a little bit further than that. A little low, don't want to drop down yet. Oh, that would be nice actually getting out of there. I'm supposed to take like eight teacher, eight teachers out of here and I'll have a headwind for top up. So that will actually be really good. Because there's like a 300 kg penalty for takeoff out of here. Beam the numbers now. We'll line up with a parallel with the runway. Bring our torque back to maybe 400 to 450 today. We'll drop down to 
4,200 40, feet. And then we'll turn our base. 73, 83, and 93. We want 93 on downwind. base, drop it to 4,000. Don't turn till the river. Basically that ridge right there. Okay, full flaps. Checklist is complete as far as it can go. Going on down to 73 knots. Alright, here's the ridge and the river. Final, 73 knots. All right, two knots of tailwind, that's good. And 73 knots is locked in now. Four knots of tailwind. Six hundred feet on the descent, that's good. Five fifty on the descent, that's good, continuing. And we're committed. It's a sinker. and firm. We got a lot of wispies out here though in the grass. This is Andy Compe. Hope you guys enjoyed that flight. It's been a while since I've been out here and I've enjoyed it, that's for sure. The parking bay looks a little soft. Anyways, I'm gonna be throwing the drone up, getting a little video out here. I might ask around and see if there's a school here I can show you guys and whatnot. If you guys did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, consider subscribing if this is the kind of content you guys do enjoy watching, and check out the playlist at the end of this video if you want to see some more stuff. Alright, let's get our fuel off on that uphill. We landed with 520 of fuel. Shut down, turn all of our lights off, box bus generator and all. off and feather. Thanks again guys, see you next time.